conference speech last year. Ed Bulls uh, is the Shadow Chancellor and is on the line from Manchester. Good morning to you. Good morning, Justin. Can we deal with the timing, first of all, because this is so important when it comes to the pace of deficit reduction and therefore the pace of tax increases or spending cuts. Mm -hmm. When is it your intention that the deficit reduces to nothing? Our intention is to get the uh, current budget back into surplus and the national debt falling uh, by the end of the parliament and earlier if we can. So I would like to do it faster and get to a bigger surplus. But of course, that will depend upon what happens to the economy and to wages. I made a commitment yesterday that... um, our goal will be £7.5 billion a year extra coming in from tackling tax avoidance and um, tax evasion. And uh, if we can do that by the middle of the parliament, that will enable me to get the deficit down earlier. But clearly, um, that's an ambitious goal. And that's why our backstop is by the end of the parliament Um, unequivocally. What about that part of the deficit which you're going to use for investment? What about that? What about the timing on that? As I said, that... um, our aim is to have the current budget excluding investment into surplus by the end of the And the parliament. non-current budget? But um, the, uh, that will depend upon the size of the surplus that we can deliver. That will depend, again, on how much um, revenues can come in. But, but what just I'm saying... To make, sorry, just to make it clear, just, though, just it's, to it's, it's possible, then, that you will still have a very large deficit at the end of the parliament. What we're going to do is have the current budget in surplus and the national debt falling. We're making no commitments at all in our manifesto for any spending on current or investment spending paid for by additional borrowing. But our objective is different from from George Osborne's. He wants to go further than me and cover not just current spending, but investment spending. Yes. And therefore, he wants to have an overall budget surplus. I think that goes beyond balancing the books. I think it's an extreme objective for him to try and achieve. It's why he has said that he wants to have bigger spending cuts in the next three years than in the last five. Frankly, Justin, I don't think that's deliverable. I think trying to do something that extreme and that fast will backfire. It will end up, in the end, with a rise in VAT from the Tories or a cut in the National Health Service. Right. Those are things we don't want to do. But so, just to be very clear, though, and you've explained why and, and, and your reasoning, but it is possible that we have still very large deficits at the end of the Parliament if Labour were in power. My aim is to have the national debt falling. Mm. And my aim is to have the current budget into surplus. Now, the scale of that surplus determines uh, uh, how much of overall investment is covered by those tax revenues. Are you going to make uh, any cuts at all? Yes. Where? Of course. Well, we've published, uh, we're doing a um, a zero-based review of every pound government is spending. We, we have published 13 reports. We've now found sensible spending cuts, £800 million in the police budget by scrapping the Police Crime Commission elections and on police procurement, £500 million from the local government budgets, £70 million from the court budgets, £230 million from mm. education by scrapping the free schools budgets, £60 million by better procurement within the defence budget, £24 million within deaf for £200 million from overpayment in housing benefit. This adds up to a really substantial amount well, of it's money. Well, it's a few billion, isn't it? From, well, uh, and, 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 all right, let, let's leave it. Let's, let's leave it yeah. hanging there. It, it's the added up. I think just jo- yeah, part of the plan. Just jotting down what, what you said there. Why then is Jim Murphy in Scotland, Labour's leader in Scotland, um, saying you don't have to make any further cuts to achieve your spending rules? I think what Jim was, um, was doing was responding to this Tory allegation that we've signed up to £30 billion of um, spending cuts, which I think the IFS, the independent IFS, rubbished uh, last week, or this idea that it's going to be 50-50 tax and spending. There don't have to be any further cuts, that's what he said. We will have cuts in our non-protected areas outside health and education as part of getting the deficit down, alongside tax increases for people on the highest incomes, the top rate going up to 50p for people over £150,000. And those cuts will have an impact in Scotland uh, as in the rest of the country? Well, look, um, those spending um, cuts are, of course, UK-wide. But what we are going to do is have sensible spending cuts outside unplanned areas and tax changes so the, the so there will be cuts in Scotland, just to make it absolutely clear, and this is this is your, your, your new approach today, complete clarity on these matters and credibility on the rest of it, there will be cuts, some sensible cuts, as you would put it, around the country, and those cuts will also have an impact in Scotland. Well, what we um, are also... It's really point- yes or no on that. Well, um, the uh, yes, there will be cuts 
outside non-protected areas across all these budgets which will apply in England and in Scotland. But alongside that, in our manifesto today, we're also setting out ways in which financed by tax changes, for example, the mansion tax for the National Health Service, we could increase spending on our priorities. Mm -hmm. That will deliver in 2015-16 eight hundred million pounds extra for Scotland um, because that is their share of that money which is going for the bank bonus tax for youth jobs or more childcare or for the National Health Service whether or not the overall Scottish budget is cut depends upon whether or not that £800 million which is financed and extra is more than or less than our unplanned oh. cuts. And that will depend upon um, the scale right. of the unplanned cuts. So, so, so it's, not, it's not true to say um, uh, Labour will not make cuts in Scotland, but it is possible that those cuts don't come for other reasons. Well, uh, I think um, our manifesto sets out that everything is costed and paid for, but that does mean we can do a number of things, for example, as I said, on the NHS or um, for, for childcare or um, for for small business, a small business uh, tax cut. And Scotland benefits from all of those things. But getting the deficit down is going to mean spending falling in the unprotected areas alongside tax rises at the very top and also the rise in the minimum wage and the tackling of zero-hours contracts to make work pay and bring in the tax revenues. I can't afraid say to Scotland that you're going to be exempt from spending cuts in the unprotected areas, but they're sensible and they are absolutely in marked contrast to what the Tories are proposing because they want to have double the spending cuts next year than last year and also, uh, uh, and really importantly, Justin, and also the SNP because what we exposed last week is that the SNP both won't match our manifesto pledges but also their fiscal autonomy within the UK is actually fiscal austerity in the UK. It would mean a massive cut to spending in Scotland. Just something else on what, this time not on on cutting but on spending. There's a funding gap of £8 billion uh, a year. Sure. approaching us in the NHS. You know that, all the parties accept that. Uh, are you committed or not committed to spending that money? We um, were the party who, f- who founded the NHS and um, I'm determined to find whatever um, avenue I can to make sure we save the NHS but the differences I think today between me and George Osborne yesterday is I'm not going to come along and say to you on this programme I'll promise £8 billion of spending for the NHS... Really? ..without being able to show where the money will come from. Well, a lot of your supporters would say, A, make the promise, and B, show us where it'll come from. Just do it. But uh, but, uh, I think this goes to the heart of the um, trust in politics and the election choice. You had George Osborne yesterday asked 18 times by Andrew Marr where Mm. he would find the £8 billion from, and he couldn't say. What we've done is we've said we can do £2.5 billion a year starting straight away for 20,000 more nurses... Well, you used to say £2.5 billion... more than anything that Conservatives planned. And exactly. that, of course, you're not saying any more. No, I'm saying that. It's £2.5 billion pounds, uh, on so, top of the NHS budgets in the next Parliament because no, but we're showing be more where the money what, will come whatever from. the Conservatives plan. Exactly. So, so in, in fact, your increase would then be £10.5 billion, which you're certainly not promising. I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I, but, hang I, on, I, Justin. But, 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 but hang on, Justin. That takes as a given that George Osborne is funding that £8 billion. Where's the money coming from? We've no idea. He said yesterday, £8 billion, trust me, I'll deliver it. Where's he going to get that from? Alongside it, massively deep cuts. A lot of your people find it incredibly depressing, though, that, that rather than taking that approach, you don't say, number one, we will fund it, but number two, to show how uh, more fiscally credible we are than George Osborne, we will fund it and show you where the money is coming from. You yeah. seem to be saying this morning that the money cannot be found. No, uh, what I'm saying is that we are going to do everything we can to find that money. For example, I've set aside an objective to get £7.5 billion a year in tax avoidance and evasion in a way George Osborne won't. But if I said today I'm going to spend that money before we've got it in, people would say that's well, not responsible. Other things, though, aren't you? No, I'm not. In the in the tax avoidance changes we are making, for example, to abolish the bedroom tax or to invest in the NHS, we've set out and costed the particular avoidance measure which brings in the money. But I'm setting a more ambitious objective which goes beyond that to close the tax gap, of the, the uncollected tax. But if I started saying now I'm going to spend that in four years' time when I can't tell you where the money would come from, I think you would say, well, look, that's an unfunded commitment. You've not shown us where the money will come from. That's what George Osborne did this week 
weekend on volunteering so, and rail fares and the NHS. I'm not going to treat the British people with the contempt that I think the Conservative Party did this weekend. And more than that, but what's it wouldn't the tr- be con- treating the con- with contempt if you said where the money was going to come from, if you looked and found it. And that, uh, but, I think a lot of people in your sign, a lot of Labour candidates might be surprised um, that you can't look and find it. Hang on, Justin. The deficit's ninety billion pounds. Uh, the government's not managed to balance the books. I've got to find a way in which I can get the deficit down every year, starting from a £90 billion deficit, without increasing the tax burden on working families who've paid a lot of extra tax, while trying to safeguard our vital public services so the and make the economy might stronger. Not come. I mean, that is, that is the fact of what you're saying this morning, isn't it? That £8 billion that the chief executive of the NHS in England says is so important, in fact, many health uh, uh, officials would say it will need to be more than that. You are saying it is possible... Mm-hmm. Uh, when you come and you look at the books, that that money cannot be found. Uh, I said at last year's conference, we will do what it takes on the NHS. We've always been the party which funded the NHS. And you're saying this morning that you won't do what it takes. No, but I'm saying today that we have a budget responsibility lock on our manifesto, which is we will make no commitments to spend money unless we can show where the money will come from and it will not be funded by additional borrowing and will cut the deficit every year. I'm not going to treat the British people with the contempt George Osborne did yesterday, trying to say he can magic the money up without saying where it will come from. People know in the end, every Tory government promises not not to raise VAT before the election and then raises it after. We don't want to raise VAT. And not even to spend I'm, on the NHS. Well, that is why I'm being very, very careful and disciplined today to say to the British people, two and a half billion pounds a year, extra nurses and doctors, the NHS going back under the... Uh, going backwards under the Tories. We all can see that. Nobody's going to believe Tory promises of £8 billion when the deficit's £90 billion and they can't say where the money will come from. And people will fear it will be another VAT rise as David Cameron broke his promise at the last election and John Major and Norman Lamont and, and Margaret Thatcher and, and Geoffrey Howe in 1979 as well. Right. I'm not going to treat people with that uh, contempt. Everything in our manifesto is costed, paid for, no additional borrowing. The sums add up and we'll save the NHS too. Ed Balls, thank you very much. And I should just say uh, a piece of very good news. Nick Robinson.